Hello, this is Haku Devine, and I'm here with SCP-1915, also known as, uh, actually I don't know the actual name of this, let me look really quickly. Just gotta find it real quick. <sighs> oh, yeah, status quo. This is an anomaly which is known for making things around it non-anomalous. It doesn't matter what is around it. Everything around it will go to what this person and knows as their own status quo. As we will read it very momentarily. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If not, then you don't have to. <sighs> Item number, SCP-1915. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1915 is to be kept in its self-modified human or containment unit. It, it furniture and essence are unnecessary as SCP-1915 provides them itself. One guard is to escort SCP-1915 during its daily walk around the designated yard. No equipment or sense, no expense or sensitive equipment is to be brought into SCP-1915 in vicinity. Description: SCP-1915 is a Caucasian man, 33 years old, of an unex unexceptional build and height. Identified as blank by a document it was carrying on its person at the time of its retrieval. A background check revealed no of relatives or close friends. SV-1915's anomalous nature stems from a localized abnormality which negates any significant long-term changes to its body, personality, memory, or lifestyle. SCP-1915 alters reality in its close vicinity as is necessary to maintain its Personal status quo. SCP-1915's effects are largely limited to non-living matter manipulation and internal mental manipulation, and are incapable of permanently affecting living creatures other than SCP-1915 itself. SCP-1915 does not appear to be aware of its anomalous properties, and the mild to moderate and discontent it expressed concerning its life during several interviews suggests it possesses limited, if any, control over them. SCP-1915 is unaware of its containment, leaving it is still ill employed at the offices of the now defunct McDonald's Corporation, where it was recovered. Yes, I just made fun of McDonald's. They can fight me. Addendum 1915A, Incident Log 1915. <sighs> Data sometime after 2000. Other than that, nothing is known. Offices of the McDonald's Corporation. Blank, blank. <sighs> Description. During its initial recovery, SCP-1915 was escorted to Site-17 by Mobile Task Force Delta-17, Green Caps. As it was being transported, SCP-1915 altered MTF Delta-17, its armored vehicle, to the form of a number blank city bus, which SCP- in 1915 used in its commute to work while it was still employed. SV 1915 was seemingly convinced the members of the task force were other passengers. Agent Blank, who was driving the vehicle at the time, was briefly convinced that he was a bus driver and assumed the vessel's usual route. Rural persuasion from other task force members proved sufficient in the gang this effect, and SV 1915 was safely transported in the altered vehicle to Site 17. <clears throat> Incident 1915B. 
I'm guessing the same day. S location, Site 17. Humanoid Containment Wing, Cell 257. Upon arriving at a designated cell, SCP-1915 converted it to an exact repl replica of its apartment located at blank. I mean, at, re at redacted. Electronic devices continued functioning even without an external power source, and the bathroom maintained both a uh, running water supply and sewage access. When removed from the converted cell, objects is not retained as anomalous property. SV-1915 assumed that escorting sites security members and researchers are neighbors and local service givers. <sighs> uh, the very next day. <sighs> Location, Site 17, Humanoid Containment Wing, in cell 257, with dense Closet 17. Description. The following morning, the morning following its initial containment, SCP-1915 exits cell despite being locked and entered a nearby maintenance closet. Site security dispatched to the scene discovered the closet was converted to make SCP-1915's cubicle at, at McDonald's, including working telephone and internet connections. When confirmed by site security, SCP-1915 apologized for coming after hours to finish the budget report. Claiming it, that needed the extra income. <laughs> Addendum 1915B Interview Log SCP 1915-3 Interviewer is Dr. Bob. Interviewed is SV 1915. Forward. This interview was held a week after SCP 1915's recovery. During that time, SV 1915 has maintained the same set daily routine. <sighs> Good afternoon, SV 1915. Oh, hello. The K is silent, by the way. Are you new around here? SCP 1915, are you aware of where you are? Hmm? Oh, in the office, of course. This isn't your office. Well, of course, it's not mine. I was passed for promotion again. That's not what I meant. I don't think so, at least. Hmm. <sighs> Don't worry about it. it. Happens all the time. People look at me and say, "Look at this guy. He must have an office by now. Worked for the company for so long, after all. Dedicated man like him. But no, it's a cubicle life for me. So what's your position? Uh, junior accountant. Ernstine's team. You guys are on the, the third floor, right? Yeah, next to the coffee machine. That's where Lisa works, right? Um, sure, I guess. Could you tell her to... I don't know, give me a call sometime? Sure. <sighs> you know what, forget it. She's just... She's just going to reject me. Don't tell her anything. At least that way I can still dream. That's nice. Listen, I think the boss is waiting for me, so... Oh, sure, man, sure. You have a good day, you hear? Don't be a stranger. That is one of many interesting things that have been said to happen with SV-1915. As you might have noticed, I have another tab open. This one being the experiment log with every attempt ever to try and kill SCP-682. Including this one, relating to SCP-1915. <sighs> the item is SCP-1915. There was no tissue test this time. Termination test log. At 423, SCP-1915 is transported to 
SCP-682's containment facility. SCP-1915 seems to have been convinced it is a guest at the site to fix financial issues. At 425, SU-1915 enters the containment observation area and asks to see the documents relating to the financial problems. SCP-682 does not undergo any changes. <sighs> At 439, SCP-1915 discusses site at length's financial records and budget reports. SP-682 begins to thrash violently. Top of Site-19, in, by the way. Sits there in Site-19. <sighs> at 4.45, at this point, SP-682's containment chamber and observation area are changed into a large office room and holding tank with SCP-682 resembling a large Komodo dragon. At 5 o'clock, SCP-1915 notices SCP-682 and asks what it is. Site Director er, Blank explains it is the resident Komodo dragon that no one could get rid of. The Blank explains it is responsible for the most uh, most of financial troubles as it messes with equipment and no one can get it to leave. 5.01 in the morning. SCP-1915 Whoops. Attempts to interact with the Komodo dragon by opening a can of cat food from a mini fridge nearby. SP-682 looks and starts at it. 5.05, SP-1915 returns to his office and begins to file reports. SCP-682 now resembles an iguana. At 5.40, SV-1915 finds a document and begins to make changes to it. The document seems to be a flat text proposal. At 16, SCP-1915 finishes and shows signs of, of surprise. SV-1915 proceeds to then, turn, then head towards the large office area. SCP-682 now resembles a newt. At 6.12, SB-1915 proceeds to gather every staff member to the large office to announce its discovery. Most are annoyed or uninterested as SB-1915 produces the document. Dr. Blank asks what it is. <sighs> At 6.20, SB-1915 explains that the document was a flat tax proposal Oh, well, that proves that, that SCP-682 is actually related to data expunge, which in itself is remotely related to whales. This debunks numerous rumors and theories of SCP-682. At 625, all staff members begin to take notes and begin to discuss changes to the facility and containment of 682. Most seem to be related to luxury. D. Blank suggests drawing the document to 682. <sighs> At 640, SV 1915 shows the document to 682, which now resembles a goldfish. The goldfish becomes immobile. SP-682 is believed to have somehow died of shock. All personnel begin to berate SCP-1915 for killing the goldfish. SCP-645, SP-1915 proceeds to apologize and finish final reports and leaves to return to its original containment site. Site Blank returns to its original form, and soon after its departure, er, er, what, at 682, Regenerating and reanimating soon after. <sighs> <sighs> mm. 
notes. The reason for SCP's in 1915's move to Site-19 is unknown. And current belief is that an attempted termination of SCP-682 was made, and effects by SCP-1915 to reflect its status quo, SCP-682 has only described the experience as humiliating, and has shown signs of aggression towards any mention of SCP-1915. No other information has been found for the cause of the event. Excuse me. <sighs> Anyway, that is all we have for SCP-1915 that I know of. If I find anything else, well then, then I guess I'll have found something else and maybe make a video of it. Maybe not. Maybe we can just move on and enjoy other SCP articles. If you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and if you didn't like the video, then why did you watch for literally 16 minutes? You wasted your time. You did not have to do that. Anyway, I'll see you next time with some more SCP. It's looking like I'm getting some of my energy and speaking abilities back. I still have a slight throat pain, but it's going away as well. And what? And those are starting to clear up, or at least it was. That might take a little bit longer, but soon I'll be fine. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.